Hello and welcome to another episode of Junji Ito Maniac Japanese Tales of the Macabre. This is episode 11, The Back Alley and Headless Statue. So I'll start off with The Back Alley. So The Back Alley is a story about a guy named Ishida and he is renting a room from this woman named Uchiyama and her daughter Shinobu. It's basically a boarding house and uh, she's showing him the room that he's going to be staying in. And it turns out to be Shinobu's old room. And she does like, oh, like, I hope I didn't kick her out or anything. And the mom's like, no, she's moved into the next room over. Uh, I'm glad that you're here. We've been having trouble getting, you know, renters. And she just kind of explains the rules. Like, we make breakfast and dinner. Sometimes I might be late for dinner because of work, blah, 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 blah have a good night he decides to go for a walk and as he's passing by the house that he's going to be staying at he notices that there's an alley but the alley is blocked off by this giant concrete fence and there's barbed wire at the top so it's basically showing that people can't get in he's kind of like oh that's kind of weird why you why would you block off an alley like that but he continues on his way so he goes for his walk then on his way back this man is like following him and uh ishada goes inside has dinner with uh the mom meets shinobu for the first time she's uh 14 years old still in middle school and he's like well you know i hope we can get along and stuff and then uh he decides to go to bed and there's this nice little reference where before he's going to bed he's reading this book called hell of thorns which is the horror book from the episode the uh the library episode where the guy goes crazy and stuff the horror book, Hell of Thorns, is the book that Ishada is reading. But uh, Ishada puts it down, goes to sleep, and he's woken up to the sound of children playing. And he's kind of like confused. He's like, it's a little late for kids to be playing. And so he opens up his window and he looks out. And he's going to tell them to be quiet, but they keep playing. And he notices that the sound seems to be coming from the back alley. So he climbs out the window, hangs onto the... Um, the wall and tries to peek in but he almost ends up falling all he sees when he looks in is just pitch blackness and just the sounds of kids we cut to the next day where ishida his things have arrived he's putting his boxes up and stuff and shinobu shows up to help him and as she's helping him set up the books he tells her that he heard the sound of uh children playing and he's like you know it was really weird uh it sounded like it was coming from the alleyway and shinobu says oh uh don't worry about that like there's a lot of alleys around here and sounds echo so it might seem like it just came from the alley like right behind this wall but it, it's not it's probably from really far away this sort of thing happens all the time like i used to hear them all the time when i was sleeping here other people heard it too that's why like they they got freaked out and they left but it's just kids playing you don't have to worry about it he's like oh okay and she's like, um, he even explains, like, I even hopped out the window to try to get a peek over the fence. And um, she's like, did you see anything? And he's like, no, it was too dark. She's like, whatever you do, don't do that again. You know, you, you might fall and hurt yourself. And he's like, oh, yeah, don't worry. I, I, I actually almost fell when I did it the first time. So I'm not going to do it again. You don't got to worry about that. And so then we cut to later that night where Ishida is reading again. And this time he hears a masculine voice. Rather than kids, he hears like a man's voice. And as he gets closer, like he leans his ear against the wall that leads out into the alleyway. And he hears the man yelling Shinobu over and over again. The next day, he's going for a walk. And he comes across the man that was following him previously. And the man says, uh, you're the one that's renting out the room in Mrs. Uchiyama's place, right? And he's like, yeah, who are you? And he explains that I was a boarder a year ago. And I heard... Like the things I've seen and heard, it, it was too scary. I'm sure you're familiar with the tall fence, right? The one with barbed wire. I believe a murder took place on the other side of there. Um, in the corner of that closed off alley, uh, there's an iron lid that leads to an underground area. Uh, one day I opened up the lid and I found running corpses of three children down below. And on that alley wall behind the lid are three stains in the shape of children. And each night when the sun goes down, the stains will come out of the wall and come to life, and the kids will play. 
and every night I watched it happen from my window. And she was like, you were just having a bad dream. And the man's like, I thought it was a bad dream at first, but those horrifying memories are like ingrained into my head. I know that's what I saw. And she was like, that's impossible. There's no window there. there. The only window leads out. There's no window that leads into the alleyway. And the man's like, I'm sure it's there. Please, you have to check. I, I have to know for sure if what I saw is real or not. And so Yoshida is like in his room. He's like, man, that guy is just nuts. But as he's looking at the wall that leads to the alleyway, he sees that there's something behind the bookcase. And he pushes the bookcase aside. And he sees that there's actually a window there. So the guy was telling the truth. Not only is there a window there, but there's actually a rope that can be tossed down to go down. And he peeks out the window and he sees the hatch and he sees the three stains of children on the walls. And he goes down there and he sees writing, um, like, you know, die, 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 I stab at you. He sees that there's not just the three children, but there's actually three more figures on the wall. Two little quick female figures and then one man figure. And uh, he breaks the lock on the hatch, opens it up, and he finds dead bodies in there. Like the skeletal remains of dead bodies. And so it turns out that the guy was telling the truth. And he freaks out. And he starts climbing the rope to get out of there when a hand appears with a knife and stabs at his hand and he falls to the floor. And then the rope gets pulled up and it's Shinobu. Shinobu is there. And uh, Shinobu explains that as a child, um, she threw three of her classmates inside the hole because um, she didn't want anyone else playing in that alley with her. Like that alley was hers. She was the queen of the alley. It was her property, her only source of fun. She didn't want anyone else to be there. So she threw the kids inside the hole and uh, eventually they ended up dying. And her father discovered what happened. And so he built a uh, the giant fence to fence out the area so that no other, so no one can like, discover what happened. And uh, Shinobu eventually um, invited two classmates that uh, to her place and she killed them and stuffed them inside the hatch and then eventually she ended up killing her father and stuffed him in the hatch too and at night the ghosts come out and they uh they try to taunt her because they want revenge but they can't reach her house the only window towards her house is the one that um was blocked off by the bookcase and it's, it's too high up it's on the second floor so they they can't reach up there so uh, every night they, they try to get her, but every night they can't. And so she kind of taunts them and stuff about how they'll never get revenge. And the Sheeta eventually like passes out from his wounds. I think it's just from the fall. But he passes out and it doesn't really explain too much in the um, anime. It's just, she just, we see uh, Shinobu just climb down the rope down there to go check on Ishida. But in the manga, it's explained a little bit more in detail. Basically, she climbs down the rope because she's going to stuff Ishida's body into the hatch and get rid of him. But as she's climbing down, the rope snaps and she falls. I think the anime tries to kind of hint that the mom is the one that snapped the rope. I don't know. It's just, There's this weird thing where we cut between uh, the mom um, making food. And then um, as Ishida is climbing down, we cut back to the kitchen and the mom is gone. So I think it's supposed to be hinting that the mom cut the rope. However, in the manga, Shinobu ended up cutting the rope by accident. Basically, when she went to stab at Ishida, she stabbed at his hand, which was holding the rope, and it cut a bit of the rope. Not enough to snap it off, but just enough to slice it a bit. And so when Shinobu is climbing down, her weight causes the, the rope at the cut point to snap off, and she falls down. And um, she freaks out uh, because she realizes it's getting dark, and there's no way for her to get out. And just as the sun sets, the ghosts start protruding from the wall. And um, she screams because she knows that they're finally going to get her. This is where uh, this episode, in general, the two segments, really kind of showcases that this anime was made with a very low budget. Because um, I'll get to it when we get to the second segment. But at least for this point, a lot of the terror and stuff on uh, Shinobu's face doesn't really come through. Whereas, of course, in the, the manga, like she's absolutely terrified. She's freaking out at this point because she knows that she's stuck in the alleyway and it's the sun setting, so she's screwed. So we really see like her her realizing her impending doom. We don't really get too much of that in the anime. Like we get hints of it, but it's not really fully 
shown to us because of just the poor animation. But yeah, there you go. There's Back Alley. And so the next story is Headless Sculpture. And this one, we have our main character, Rumi. And Rumi is in uh, an art school with uh, her friend Shimada. And their art teacher is Mr. Okabe. And he's a sculptor and he's preparing an art exhibition. So they're going to help him with his um, exhibit. She, uh, they mentioned about how like his work is unique. Like all the sculptures are headless. And he explains that art doesn't need faces. Like faces kind of are too expressive. But when you get rid of the face, then the artwork can take on many different forms. Because like all you're seeing is the poses. It could mean so many different things. You can kind of interpret whatever meaning you want behind it. And so that's why he has all, all the heads gone. And um, Rumi eventually says, like, you know, it's getting late. I got to leave. And Shimada says, okay, go ahead. Like, go without me. I'm going to stay here and help Mr. Okabe. In the manga, it's a lot more creepy because um, in the manga, Rumi is basically, uh, like, they mention how beautiful she is and that she should be a model for one of Mr. Okabe's future artworks. And they kind of tease her about maybe posing nude for Mr. Akabe. And it's like, Mr. Akabe is a grown man. This is a high school girl. It's kind of creepy. Thankfully, that's not mentioned here in the anime. It's just kind of cut out. But um, either way, she leaves. So it's just uh, Akabe and uh, Shimada. And the next day, Rumi goes to school. And there's a bunch of uh, students outside the old art building as well as police officers, and Rumi's like, what's going on? And it's explained that Mr. Kabe was murdered. And not only was he murdered around midnight, but his head was decapitated and taken. All they found was his headless body. And Rumi has like a flashback of Shimada and how Shimada, before Rumi left, Shimada says, don't tell anyone that I'm going to be staying late with Mr. Kabe. So she rushes over to Shimada's house to see what's going on. Uh, this is a little bit different from the uh, manga. In the manga, she goes to Shimada's house first because she always walks to school with Shimada. So she goes to his house first and Shimada is acting a little bit weird. He just says that he's not going to school because he's feeling a little bit under the weather and to go to school without him. And then that's when she goes to school, realizes that Mr. Okabe has been murdered. And then she runs back to go see what, uh, you know, what happened. Um, she goes to question Shimada. And um, Shimada eventually, uh, she tells him like what happened. Shimada steps out and Shimada is wearing his winter uniform, despite the fact that it's summer. He's also wearing gloves and he's wearing a face mask. So um, his hands are covered, his arms are covered, his whole body from the neck down is covered and even his mouth is covered. And he basically just uh, says that, uh, you know, he didn't kill Akabe. Last time I saw him, he was still alive. And then he kind of tells roommate that he loves her he's always loved her and let's go for a walk and as they're going for a walk he explains that okabe is still alive he's just hiding out in the art building somewhere so he's going to take her to the art building meanwhile we have two girls who are in the art building uh one of them is trying to look for um her uh she has an exam coming up and she has a study book that she accidentally left behind in the art building so they go in to get it when um they end up going to the art classroom because that's where the book is when they hear this weird noise and they turn, they see this door open and they see Mr. Okabe's grotesque face and he approaches the two girls and she sc and they scream. Then we cut back to uh, Shimada and Rumi who enter the art building. Um, we have this weird moment where um, Shimada like grabs Rumi's hand and it makes like this like creaking sound. But he leads her into the art building, into the uh, Mr. Okabe's room and then he locks the door behind him. And Rumi is kind of confused, like wondering why, why did you lock the door? And that's when um, Shimada takes off his face mask and she sees that there's blood coming down his mouth. And she asks him like, what's wrong with you? And Shimada says, everything's okay, but his mouth's not moving. And um, she's like, where did your voice come from? Where's Mr. Okabe? And Sh Shimada says, Mr. Kabe is right here. And he goes to the statue and he pulls off uh, this like towel that was covering the statue, revealing Mr. Okabe's head attached to the statue. And he picks up the head and he drops it. And um, he starts approaching Rume. 
and Rumi freaks out and she slaps Shimada and his head turns around and falls off, and revealing just like this plastered stump. And the headless body of Shimada starts approaching Rumi and Rumi backs up. She sees uh, the stool. She picks it up and she smashes Shimada. And Shimada falls and breaks into a bunch of pieces, revealing that he was nothing but a statue. And then that's when the other statue that Mr. Akabe's head was attached to comes to life, carrying a cleaver, and starts chasing after Rumi. We have this really funny moment where we see Rumi struggling to unlock the door, and then we get a behind the back shot of the statue. So we just get like this close up of the statue's ass. <laughs> and it reminds me very much of the um, that uh, meme, I feel you bro, or uh, I know that feeling. Um, it's supposed to be like the, the two uh, rage comics like hugging each other, but there's like a uh, another version where he's like squeezing the other guy's ass. It looks like, it just reminds me of that for some reason. So yeah, we get a, just a shot of the statue's butt, uh, but eventually, the statue starts chasing Rumi. Rumi uh, is able to get the door open. She rushes out, but she sees two statues at the end of either hall. So like they've kind of pincered her in. So she runs into another classroom. And inside she sees the headless body of Shimada and the two girls that were in there previously. And then she sees the rest of Akabe's statues. And they're fighting over the two girls' heads. Like they're trying to put the heads on themselves. And um, eventually they see Rume and they're like, oh, look, there's another one. She has such a beautiful face. It's going to be mine. And then they go after her and Rume like freaks out. She backs up into the door. The window smashes open. The statue with the cleaver is there. And uh, all the statues reach out for Rume as she screams. And that's how it ends. So, yeah, basically the statues have come to life and they all want heads. So they're killing people and stealing their heads. That, that's pretty much the gist of the story. Uh, I really liked it. I thought it was good. I, I liked both of these stories, like both the manga versions. And um, I will say that the anime versions are good as well. So I mentioned earlier about the, um, the lack of money, <laughs> like production money that went into this. So there's a moment where Rume, she's screaming. She rushes out of the classroom and she confronts two more like mannequins at the end of the hall. And she's freaking out as the mannequins are chasing after her. Her expression does not match her scream. Like she's screaming like crazy. Her mouth isn't moving though. Her face is still kind of like the same expression. So yeah, basically they didn't have a budget to to really go into details when it came to the expressions on characters' faces. It's very noticeable in uh, this episode. So yeah, that's kind of a shame. I think uh, Junji Ito anime series with a good, decent budget would be very phenomenal. Depending on what stories they pick. This time, they actually picked two really good stories. I, I love both Back Alley and Headless Sculptures. Like, the manga itself is really good. And the anime was was pretty faithful adaptations. Like, minus the small little changes that I mentioned, it's pretty much um, exactly the same. They didn't really change all that much. So, I thought it was good. Good faithful adaptation. Good episode for the most part, minus the um, noticeable lack of a budget. But uh, I liked it. I thought it was really good. Voice acting is always really good. Voice acting just completely carries this entire series. I'm listening in on the uh, the Japanese audio. The Japanese voice actors and actresses are just like, they're doing their hardest. And it really shows. Like, it just comes across really good. Unfortunately, sometimes the uh, actual visuals kind of are lackluster because I'm assuming the budget wasn't all that high up. But um, I enjoyed this. There is... Episode 11 of Junji Ito Maniac, Japanese Tales of the Macabre, The Back Alley, and Headless Statue. I thought this was a good one. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. I hope to see you next time. Take care. Later.